As mentioned at the end of Guatemala 2, I took the bus from Antigua down to the Pacific coast at Monte Rico. The road went past the site of the massive explosion that destroyed large areas on this side of the Fuego volcano and killed dozens of people. There were wrecked buildings all over the place. piles of ash. The minibus dropped me right outside my hotel, El Delphine, which lies right on the beach. Here some of the artwork is being improved. This is the view from the recliners at El Delphine, a Pacific sunset. Next day I got up early specifically to film the pelicans passing by. The locals call these the Monterrico Air Force. I just love the way they seem to rise effortlessly above the waves, often without even flapping their wings. Poetry in motion. Most people are here just to lounge around on the beach. The nearer you were to the coast, the more expensive the food was, so I walked inland to eat where the local people ate, at this little restaurant. It doesn't look very great, but the food was very good. This was my breakfast hangout. <coughs> All over Guatemala, you can buy really good chips or French fries from roadside stalls like this one. And this is what I usually have for a lunchtime snack at the hottest part of the day. I sat down for my evening meal in this small restaurant. After dark there wasn't really much to do, so I used to enjoy strolling down the streets, looking into the shops and just soaking up the hot tropical feel of the place. Next morning it was a walk down to the dockside for a boat trip in the local nature reserve which comprised mainly beautiful mangrove swamps. There's a fairly frequent service of ferry boats both for people and for vehicles up the local canal. Motive power for my hour long trip into the mangroves was one man and a pole. Note the typical stilt roots of this species of mangrove tree.
After the blissful peace of the mangroves, it was back to the main canal and the noise of motorised transport. After backtracking to Antigua, I made the long journey eastward to Rio Dulce and the Hotel Backpackers. The fish market in town was, as always, extremely interesting, but a bit smelly. As usual, there were plenty of flies to be kept away. On the main street, there were the usual food stalls, crowded into the side, right next to the main road where huge trucks were constantly passing by. After a couple of days in Rio Dulce, I took the public boat down to Finca Tatin, set in the rainforest. Before heading east towards the Atlantic, the boat first of all heads west towards this fort on the river, the Castillo de San Felipe. The Spanish built this fort to prevent frequent raids by British pirates and it was back east towards the Atlantic. Stopping briefly to buy a few local wares, to look at the water lilies, and the warm springs that bubble out into the river here. With some very tame birds. And so to Finca Tatin, beautifully situated in rainforest on a tributary of the Rio Dulce. <laughs> In the evening, everybody ate dinner together, making this a great place to meet people. And the food was superb. Insects were generally in very short supply in the forest, but there were some butterflies right outside my dormitory. This passion flower butterfly is laying eggs. And this bug is just looking extremely unpleasant. It's chemically defended and warning everybody keep away by its bright colours. Most people associate nectar with flowers, but some plants produce nectar on their leaves, designed to attract defending insects such as ants. These little green bowls here contain nectar which attract the ants, they spend all their time on the plant and then if any enemies arrive such as caterpillars or other plant eating animals then the ants will drive them away. See how the ant is eagerly dipping its jaws into the nectar filled bowl.
These flowers hanging over the river on a tree attract hummingbirds, but for very, very brief visits. So I'm having to repeat the actual visit itself. There's one. And we see it again. Next day, down river towards the Atlantic and the town of Livingstone. Very attractive gorge with beautiful forest on both sides. Near where the boat docked, they were drying fish and also salting it. Now, lots of pelicans hanging around for their share. The brown birds are this year's juveniles. The white bird is an adult. <laughs> It's only a small town. to the boat dock for Finca Dadin and the arrival of a quartet of backpackers who had kayaked down to Livingston. We would take them back in our boat towing the kayaks behind us but not without first stopping for some fuel. Next day it was back to Rio Dulce and the Hotel Backpackers, which is run by the Casa Guatemala Children's Home. Sitting on a bench in front of my dormitory, I watched the sun setting. It was now Christmas Eve, and this is the boat carrying Father Christmas to the children. Every day I would walk out of my dorm and look in the nearby forest, which was thick with iguanas, many of them of massive size. Iguanas are found throughout Central America, but they're often eaten, so it's nice to know that here the local people protect them and that even feed them at times. This is the restaurant on the right, and the iguanas sometimes fall down onto the planking there and scurry across between the tables. It was mating season, so there was lots of rivalry between the males and sometimes fights. Look at the bloody males on these two. The winner displays to his rival. These two are working themselves up to a frenzy, ready to grapple high up in a tree. They can fall as much as 20 metres out of a tree without hurting themselves. Every morning I would walk up over the bridge for a view over the lake.
could also just see the cormorants flying from a roost near the hotel up under the bridge. And so down into Rio Dulce town for a cheap lunch. Back at the hotel, lunch was also being taken with some difficulty by this egret. He just couldn't manage to swallow this fish. This gives you an idea of how tame these birds sometimes get. It finally managed it and you can see it going down its throat. Boats often left from the hotel, heading to other hotels down river, such as Finca Tatin. And so as these boats headed off, it was time for me to pop down over the bridge and take the bus to my next destination in El Salvador.